Acting on your instructions, I flew from Melbourne to Hobart, Tasmania to investigate the prospects of establishing your service industry in the state. I arrived on the afternoon flight and went straight into the city, which is approximately 19 kilometres from the airport. On the way to the city, I happened to notice a new light industry area about two kilometres from the airport, so I decided to make further inquiries on arrival. I contacted the Tasmanian Directorate of Industrial Development and Trade and was told the area is in fact a new industrial complex being developed on the eastern shore of the Derwent River in the Clarence Municipality. The municipality plan for the area shows two industrial sites. Cambridge Park in the heart of a rural area and a few kilometres west of this, Warrain, which is a well-developed township. Both sites are fully serviced with power, sewerage and water. Warrain is a community of some 8,000 people with excellent and continually expanding service facilities. Town planning has made allowance for quite considerable open space areas with ample sporting facilities. In the Warren area, the land costs about $25,000 a hectare. And in Cambridge, ten to $12,000. Within a radius of 5 to 10 kilometres of these areas is a catchment population of 40,000 people. Undoubtedly, one of the major questions arising from the establishment of a service industry is transport to interstate centres. And in this case, there are direct links by sea and air from Tasmania's capital. For example, the port of Hobart has embarked on a massive expansion programme designed to cater for all types of shipping. The port is well served by interstate shipping with the accent on roll-on, roll-off container ships. Good terminal facilities enable expeditious storage and handling of all types of cargoes. These port facilities are within a few kilometres of the industrial areas mentioned. Connecting road networks have been upgraded to speed delivery from factory to port. Hobart Airport also provides fast freight and passenger services. The Clarence Commission places certain restrictions on service industries in the Cambridge Park area. Because it's a high prestige area, the Commission insists on what it terms visual good manners. As the area is virtually the front door to Hobart, the Commission puts a restriction on unsightly signs outside the factories. Loading bays and storage yards must be positioned so that they're not directly visible from the highway. All factories are asked to comply with plans for an industrial park setting with proper landscaping and green belts. I looked at two other areas in the southern part of the state, the Kingborough and Brighton municipalities. Kingborough municipality is 11 kilometres from Hobart and is served by an excellent road system, the Southern Expressway. I was impressed by the beauty of the area. The central town of the municipality is Kingston, which is placed in a rural setting adjacent to the Derwent River. My first impression was that Kingston was a prosperous bayside suburb. It has a fine beach, and its houses are of solid construction set in spacious blocks of land. It's the type of situation ideal for the development of executive homes. The Kingborough Council has mounted a far-sighted and efficient publicity campaign to attract service industries to its area. This is based on an unpolluted residential area, 
ready access to beaches and farming areas, and congestion-free travel via the expressway and its extension. Approximately 16 hectares has been set aside for light industry at an average price of $12,000 per hectare. Two industries are already established and are fully serviced. They are Robbins, an American engineering company, and Labor Constructions, a joinery firm. 23 kilometres north of Hobart is the Brighton municipality, which also has a rural setting. This is largely undeveloped industrially, but a far-sighted council has set aside 323 hectares for light industry. Apart from two sawmills, the only industrial development to date is the firm of Blackwood Hodge, who specialise in earth-moving machinery. The council assured me that all services such as water, power and sewerage were available on site. Near the main township, Bridgewater, the State Housing Department has embarked on a large housing estate which will provide a labour pool for any future industrial expansion. What I saw in the Hobart area was extremely satisfactory, but the Directorate of Industrial Development suggested I investigate other areas in the north and northwest of the state. Taking their advice, I flew to Tasmania's northern city, Launceston, to take a look at the newly constituted Tamer Regional Development Scheme. Launceston, with an urban population of 62,000, is situated on the Tamer River and is about 190 kilometres from the capital, Hobart. Tamer Regional Development is roughly divided into three parts, with the main industrial region at the mouth of the river, the central area for tourism and recreation, and Launceston as the region's administrative centre. The Tamer Regional Development Authority wants to attract industry which will assist with the area's growth. And if the industry is labour intensive, so much the better, as the region has skilled, semi-skilled and unskilled labour sources. The authority feels that there is a potential growth of service industries in conjunction with heavy industry in the Bell Bay area. At Bell Bay, industries already established are Camelco, BHP's Temco, the woolen manufacturer's Coates Patents, Northern Woodchips and AWPM. There's also a thermal power station situated at Bell Bay. There's a place for noxious industries in the overall plan. These are a matter of industrial contracts with local government authorities. The advantages of the Tamer area, as I see them, are firstly, there is a substantial local market, there is close proximity to interstate markets, sophisticated transport networks radiating from Launceston to all other parts of the state and interstate, a stable workforce in residential areas alongside industrial estates, educational facilities from primary to tertiary level, and most importantly, the Tamer region is a very pleasant place to live. The last area I visited is served by the Northwest Master Planning Authority. It's a vast area, 120 kilometres long, by 20 kilometres at its narrowest point, and 95 kilometres at its widest. Its centres of population and industry are on the coastline of Bass Strait and are La Trobe, Devonport, Alverston, Burney, Wynyard and Smithton. The Planning Authority area has a population of 84,000 and is served by a continually expanding first-class road network and an established rail system. Ports at Burney and Devonport are the main shipping outlets for interstate and overseas trade. The hinterland of the northwest coast is a rich farming area which supplies a large variety of agricultural products including milk and beef, fruit and various other crops. Large industries are well established on the coast and include the titanium oxide plant of Tioxide Australia Proprietary Limited, Goliath Portland Cement which has recently completed an eight million dollar expansion program, Associated Pulp and Paper Mills Limited, which employs 3,600 people at its mills in the Burney area. Northwest Acid Proprietor Limited, producing sulfuric acid. 
and Tootle Australia Limited, large exporters of man-made fibres. Before referring specifically to the master plan and the place in it for service industries, I would like to comment on port facilities. Devonport, for example, was quick to realise the potential of container roll-on techniques. This port is currently handling more than a million metric tonnes of cargo annually. To handle unitised and container cargoes, the Marine Board built a 233 metre long general roll-on container berth next to the existing terminal. It incorporates a 9 metre wide stern loading ramp with a 32 metric ton portal crane which can raise conventional lifts of up to 30 metric tons. An adjunct is a 25 metre ton forklift fitted with a top lifting frame for containers. The other major port, Burnie, also makes a big contribution to the area's prosperity. Exports through this port include minerals, processed vegetables, hardboard, titanium oxide, sulfuric acid, frozen meat and an ever-increasing amount of general cargo. More than 11 million dollars have been spent on improvements to this port. Because of the difficulty in assessing the potential of such a large area with the accent on service industry, I use the town of Ulverston as a typical example of master planning trends in the region. Ulverston, with a municipal population of 11,000, is 21 kilometres from Burnie and 15 kilometres from Devonport. To outward appearances, Ulverston is typical of most towns adjacent to a rural area. It has a prosperous, balanced community, with most of the standard amenities, such as good housing estates, established primary and secondary schools with provision for technical and tertiary education at Burnie and Devonport. excellent recreational facilities, a fine swimming beach which attracts many visitors, and an active social life. But if Ulverston, like most other northwest towns of a similar size, is to grow and prosper, it needs more industry. To induce industry to the area, a municipal master plan has been prepared with two areas zoned for light and heavy industry. One is to the east of the town and adjacent to the Bass Highway. And the other is to the south of the main town centre. The combined areas are 102 hectares. Industries already established include potato products and other frozen foods, tubes for paper manufacturers, dressed timber for export, the cement brick producer, and a furniture manufacturing company These then are the industrial areas I visited in Tasmania. Let me summarise them. In the south, the Clarence Municipality, the Kingborough Municipality, the Brighton Municipality. And in the north, the Tamer Regional Development Authority and the Northwest Master Planning Area. Tasmania has a diversity of industrial areas suitable for service industries. Each of these areas that I've mentioned has some particular advantage. 
I would therefore recommend that if an industry wants to establish or diversify its activities, Tasmania should be given consideration as a venue.